Welcome back to another StarCraft II replay cast. Today we're going to be watching a Protoss vs. Terran matchup in which both of our players will come to us from the Diamond League. So let's hop in and introduce them as soon as the chat clears away. But there we go. Goodbye, chat. Goodbye. Alright, close enough. Spawning down on the bottom right side of Catalina Ladder Edition, in red we have our Protoss hero, representing Notice and Vortex Esports. It is Ascaria! And spawning up at the top side of our map, apparently really enjoying whatever it is he's listening to, we have our terrifying blue Terran player from Notice and Vortex Esports. It is Koya. Koya is going to take this opportunity to build out his first refinery, as well as working on building his first barracks. So everything looks quite good there. Over here we have our first assimilator finishing up. A pylon is building in such a fashion that it should finish just at the right time. There we are keep us from supply blocking, and we had a probe ready and waiting to build that cyber core as soon as our first gateway finished up. So by and large, some very crisp, clean play from both of our players, as we would expect from players in the Diamond League. Over here we have a scouting probe. He's going to scout everything. He's going to see the expansion. He's going to see the barracks. He's going to see the reaper. He's going to die. And that means that it is now officially on between these two players that was first blood. We have Ascaria taking his natural expansion. Over here we have Ascaria building his mothership core, because a mothership a day keeps the reapers away, or so we hope at least, as the reaper heads on into the base. The mothership core is rallied to deal with this, the probe under attack is microed away. And we have our Mothership Core chasing down that Reaper. Unfortunately, Mothership Cores are quite slow, so our Mama Ship Core just needs to hang out near this base and make sure that our probes are safe. Over here we have a pylon near our ramp, which would notify us if, say, a Reaper headed up our ramp again. Ugh. Alright, the Reaper is back. He's harassing the probes. He does get a probe kill and then elegantly hops down the cliff and out of our base, but is shooed away by our Mothership core. Over here we have our natural expansion, pretty well finished for Koya. Looks like he's going to start getting his level 1 weapons upgrade, and he's going to convert this into an, uh, an orbital. For those of you who watch my show and are in the lower leagues, orbitals are really great. Go ahead and build those, I promise they're awesome. We have marines being built out here, so likely a pretty standard bio ball from Koya, which of course is quite good versus Protoss. Nothing wrong with that at all. And over here we're adding a tech lab onto this barracks so that we can get those ever important upgrades. Over here we have a couple stalkers scattered around the base. We have our own natural expansion being populated up. This stalker has one job, and unfortunately the Reaper does slip in and gets a good look around the base. Now our Stalkers are here to defend. Mothership Core is here to defend. The Reaper... escapes, amazingly. Now what the Reaper probably noticed, and what you all probably noticed, is that we have a shiny new robotics facility for Ascaria. Which is now producing observers. Which means that we're going to be able to head on over to Koya's base and see whatever it is we may want to see. Looks like at this time we're also going to add on our Colossus Den, because Colossi are great, right? I mean, they're a war crime, but they're great. Now it looks like we're going to see a few Marines heading on out, and for those of you watching this cast who note that the uh, chat is particularly active, I want to go ahead and say that these are two players who know each other, they're playing in a practice match, and here we see cold hands, so there's a pause, there's talk about music, there's calling each other bitches and saying to learn to type, GLHFs, all sorts of really nice, cheerful, buddy-buddy things. And that's just a sign that both of these players want to make sure that they very politely murder each other. So here we have what looks like might be an engagement over here at the front, and at the same time we're going to have a reaper hop into the base. Looks like Ascari is going to deal with this with a nice force field and overcharge from the Nexus. Up here he's going to do a warp in with this stalker, should be able to chase this away. Looks like we did lose a probe from this assimilator, but that's actually alright. And of course from Koya's perspective, he didn't lose too many things and he got another good look at the base. He sees that there's gateways being added on, 
sees that there's a robotics facility, and generally has things all under control and knows what's going on. Here we have our observer, keeping a close eye on everything. Nope. Dying. Dying in, uh, in Koya's base. Alright, sort of unfortunate. However, I do want to note that if you are someone who's new to the game, cloaked units can be seen via a shimmer on your screen. So, if you kill them off, that's a great way to not have them in their in your base scouting you out. And I would highly recommend it. That's very good on Koya's part. Over here, we're going to take a look with this observer. He's going to see the marines, he's going to see that there are geysers being added on, and he's going to die! Alright, Koya is really on it. Koya saying no fly zone. And indeed, Ascaria, that is a frowny face. This is not great. However, on the positive side, we have uh, Colossi being built, and it looks like we have our first one already out, which of course is a hallmark moment for all Protoss players. I also want to note that we have our Twilight Council coming up, which of course is quite important because that will allow us to continue to get our upgrades. We do have a Reaper who sees all of this for Koya, and in fact he's also going to see that we're getting our extended Thermal Lance for our Colossi. Down here our natural expansion is almost saturated, looks like it's very important that Ascaria clean up the debris in his base, and he does so. Over here we have some units sort of heading out, and we have a third coming down for Koya. Not really populated just yet, looks like we have uh, two workers as well as a mule mining from it. And at this point time we have a very good uh, timing attack moving out for Koya. Looks like he's feeling a bit aggressive today. We do have our Colossi here in the back, and of course Two or three Colossi is where you start to really feel comfortable with your count of Colossi. Definitely the more the better. Looks like we have additional gateways and pylons going down here. Oh, Koya. How many times has a Terran player done this to you, Protoss players? He attacks your front and then he drops in your main. He's gonna swing right on in here and attack those poor innocent probes. That's exactly what's gonna happen. Over here we do have Ascaria taking his own expansion. At the front we have the attack. This looks like it's going to get cleaned up pretty nicely. However, in the main, the marines are dropping from the sky. The probes are fleeing. There is an overcharge. There's a warp in. Oh, they're targeting the Colossus Den. No! Bits of it go flying everywhere. We immediately rebuild that Colossus Den because we definitely want to be able to build those war crimes. Excellent. And here are Terran retreats. Having accomplished his goal, and to be quite honest, done a fairly good job of it at this time, our Protoss player is leading in the Resources Lost tab, which is not a race that you want to win. We have our Protoss player heading out across the map with a few of these Colossi, and of course microing them so that we don't lose too many. The rest of the army is showing up to help them out. And we have a decent number of Marines dying there. Looks like we are going to chase across the map while we work on our expansion. These Colossi being fairly terrifying in reality to a large number of bio units. We do have stim though for these bio units, and of course uh, we don't want to use stim without the certified professional help of a medevac. We have to be very careful with our Colossus since we do have Vikings out on the field. However, we do have a stalker count large enough that we can deal with these, and we do have blink finished, which of course means that we can help catch them. Back here, we have to be very careful with that Colossus that's low on health. Looks like he is going to be microed back successfully. We have a worker pull from Koya from his third. Looks like we have a worker pull from his natural as well. Lots of workers are dying here. However, it looks like we have lost one Colossus. We have lost both Colossi. We are blinking back with our stalkers, taking a few final pot shots of these workers. And I believe we need to back up. I believe now is the time. Yes. Alright. Scar is making what I believe is the correct decision and backing on up. We do have this observer over here observing, and Koya chooses not to scan, possibly because he doesn't see it, possibly because many of his units cannot shoot up as they are marauders. Are going to kill off this pesky pylon. We are going to heal up our marauders. We have a few units up here on the ledge, just in case of a drop. 
because we do have that Observer following along, and in fact, we do know about this drop. We are sort of ready for it. In come a lot of Marines and Marauders. This is a very scary moment. Move the Colossus back. Definitely don't want to lose it, and we do know that's such a painful thing, but one dropship is down, two dropships, three dropships. A lot of units just lost right there. I believe our Nexus Cannon also killed off a Marauder, which has died and left his corpse of a husk over there. Additional units here for Koya. It looks like he is feeling a bit aggressive today, however, I don't know that this is really enough to be a threat to Ascaria at this time. We do have this base being repopulated after all of those worker pulls and worker kills, however, this base is looking pretty empty. And of course, up in our main, we are saturated, still have minerals to mine there, so we can't transfer too many down just yet. We do have Observer Scouts heading on over to Koya's base to check everything out. And we have a Marine Scout marching on across the map. Of course, Ascaria is at this time working on populating his third. Looks like he's just now adding those gas geysers on, which of course will help him power out those colossi, which he is now building again after that catastrophic loss from before. He's also working on his level 3 ground armor, which means that he is working on his 3-3. Over here we had a Colossus who encountered that Marine, I believe, from earlier. You can see he has one kill. And of course it's always quite scary when a Colossus is out by itself, because Marines will stim and kill it, because they hate Colossi. Here we have another pack of units moving out for Koya. Koya with the scan, just to make sure, getting ready, positioning. Looks like he's going to swing around to this ramp that will lead up to Ascaria's third, and of course this is a tense moment for Ascaria because we've seen Koya drop in his base. Protoss units are not known for their incredible mobility. Here we have a focus fire down on the third. Looks like this army is moving up to defend. We have our Colossus getting a few shots in from the back. The base is down. However, Koya is losing a decent number of units here to this Colossus. We have a blink forward into this army. Looks like the army did split up, and about half of it survived. Some of the medevacs survived, and our Protoss player is mad. He's heading out across the map, he has units to attack, and he's going to. Over here we have a small warpin of zealots, which are now heading into the third. I really don't think Koya wants to lose any more workers, but it looks like he might well. Over here we have an engagement, looks like we have some force fields. Might throwing back that Colossus like a champ. Gotta be very careful though, there are Vikings about. The Vikings do kill off the Colossus. Looks like the Vikings do kill off the Mothership Corps. However, most of the rest of the units are being killed off by Ascaria. And indeed, lots of Marauders dying and being focus fired down. Neither player having a lot of units left in the middle. We do see that the Zealots are going to get cleaned up at some point. However, they did successfully interrupt mining, as well as uh, kill off several workers, I believe, as well. I know I keep coming back to this, you guys, but in the units lost tab, our Terran player has pulled ahead to his uh, chagrin. We do have him expanding and taking a fourth, though. Koya doing a very good job of making sure that he keeps his economy up. He's always making sure that he has a base before he has the workers to saturate it so that he can begin building them faster. As well as, uh, as well as having a place to transfer his workers to when his main is mined out. We do have the pylon spotted by our Terran army. And he of course knew about the pylon because of the warp in from earlier. We have our Protoss player, at this point, researching Storm. And I love Storm. I, I don't think I make any secret of that. Storm is a great ability. It's hard to get to because Terran players will pressure you the entire game, and as well they should. But we have additional Colossi being produced. We have additional upgrades being researched. We have, soon, a uh, new High Templar, I presume, to be produced so that we can deal with some of these bio units and really lay the hurt on them. And at this point, we do have our Observer spotting all of this. Colossi doing lots of damage, however, being a little bit unprotected. We do have our High Templar out, however, Storm is not yet ready at this time. We lose two Colossi down there at the base, however, we are keeping the base itself safe and sound. We have to be very careful with our High Templar, very careful with our Colossi. Looks like we have lost, I believe, all of the Colossi, but 
completely defect deflected this attack. We have a blink forward to kill off some of these medevacs and other units. You have one stalker versus one marauder, which winds up in a draw, actually. I imagine that the stalker has help earlier. And we have storm! Storm is done! We blink out of storm so that we don't injure ourselves. And more storm! Oh, the High Templar are being kicked off, but not before storming the units that follow them. Ascaria retreating back to his base. Floating a decent number of minerals, so he's going to go ahead and, looks like, add on a few additional gateways up there in his main. We do have our Terran army, though, coming on up. Just a small contingent. Some decent force fields to keep those marauders separate. They don't have a super long range. Over here, it looks like we do have a Colossus, who is sort of in danger. Uh, oddly enough, the sentries wind up defending him, along with the two stalkers that are there. So not a huge anti-air force, however, this army is able to keep that Colossus alive. We do now have an Archon, formed from our two High Templars. Looks like Koya is going to go ahead and take a fifth base, and Ascaria is working on his fourth at this time. Another contingent of units out here for Koya. Looking in the army supply and worker supply, we can see that Koya is ahead on worker supply, mostly because he's been able to build four workers at a time since he's been up a base, and will soon be able to build five at a time. However, army supply is very much in Ascaria's favor, and he has a large number of high-tech units with those colossi in the mix, and with the ability to make high templar and archons. We have scans all over for Koya. He wants to know exactly what's going on, and in fact he does, because he can. Looks like we're about to populate this base with probes. Probes getting here just the right time, most of them. Some of them just arriving a bit early, so they're going to run on back home. We have our armies running about the map, making sure that they can defend anything that comes their way. We have a small contingent here. Ascaria loses two colossi this small contingent of units. They were unprotected by the base units. This is a tragic hit. Koya really monopolized on that particular engagement. Looks like Koya is gearing up to attack over here. However, there is an engagement over here between the two big armies. I will go ahead and check on this little uh, base skirmish that's going on back home as soon as this resolves. It looks like this is going in Ascaria's favor, and it looks like these units are sort of unsure what to do. They keep running in and out. Ascaria looks like he's gonna go for it. He's heading on in to the natural. His colossi are getting a lot of damage done from the rear. Looks like we have some Templar heading on up here. We have Cloak being researched for Ghost, but I don't think that's going to happen. Storms go down on the workers. Lots and lots of Zealots tearing everything up in the natural. Over here we have a handful of Zealots that did get warped in to try and deal with the harassment over here. They did deal with the units. I think the base fell, which is sort of unfortunate. However, I think Hoya is in trouble. This is a big problem. We see the Ghost Academy finally gone. We see that our Colossus friend is in a bit of peril from this Viking, which doesn't have much health on it, but does manage to kill the Colossus before it departs. I hear the sound of EMPs, which of course are quite scary for Protoss players, because ghosts are really, really good against Protoss. And it looks like we have two bases killed off for Koya. Many a production structure is falling. This army is still going strong. We see additional war pins going on over here. And Blink, or excuse me, Charge Zealots and Blink Stalkers together are actually quite good, especially when upgraded. We have the GG, and that's the game. So congratulations to Ascaria, that was really excellent. I always enjoy seeing Protoss players get on up on their tech. Not that I'm biased or anything. And of course, good game to Koya as well, who of course had as many bases as he possibly could all game. For those of you who enjoyed this cast, and I hope that's all of you, if you would like to see me cast one of your games, go ahead and send them to noobcrafted at gmail.com. That's N-O-O-B-C-R-A-F-T-E-D at gmail.com. For those of you who are too gosu to know how to spell noob anymore. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I had a good time casting, and I'll see you on the ladder.